So, uh, what you see there, folks, is page 227 of your textbook. It's a list of electronegativities, and we're going to be using that today, or now, to see uh, what kind of bond you have. Okay, so let's put that over there and begin. Determining bond type. Um, if you got, if you haven't noticed already, I am going out of order in the book. You're going to have to skip around a little. I think this is a logical way to do it. And uh, so, if I skip anything completely, like all the diagrams of ionic bonds forming, realize that I'm not going to test you on that. All right. So if something just totally isn't mentioned. Just chill. Okay, so determining bond type. Uh, last video, I told you there were three bond types, ionic bonds, and then polar covalent and nonpolar covalent bonds. We're gonna treat those as two separate types, although they both involve electron sharing. Um, so how do you tell what kind of bond type you have? You look at page 227, the electronegativity table. Um, ordinarily, I'd be telling you that you'd be having this table given to you for a test, but since I guess your tests are open book, then you know you've got that table. Um, so your book just looks at the difference in electronegativities. So if we have a difference in electronegativity, from now on, difference is going to be a delta. It's a, just a triangle. It's a Greek capital delta, delta E neg, difference in electronegativity, um, of 0 to 0 0.3. That bond is considered to be nonpolar covalent. I'm going to move this over here where there's more room. So... Delta E neg, zero to zero point three, nonpolar covalent. There, that shows up better. If the electronegativity difference is greater than or equal to zero point three and less than point seven we have what's known as a polar covalent bond. Unequal electron sharing. Um, what did I just do? Ignore that number. That number's 2.0. Sorry. If the electronegativity is greater than or equal to 2.0, we have an ionic bond. Some books will give you 1.7 as this value. Your book gives you 2.0, which is probably better if you do hydrogen and fluorine, which is a gas, and you use 1.7, it turns out to be ionic. So we're gonna stick with a 2.0. So how do we do this? Say I wanna look at sodium chloride, NaCl. We already use that as an example of an ionic bond. So I'm gonna to go to that table on page 227 and I'm going to look at the electronegativity for sodium and chlorine. Sodium's electronegativity is 0 0.9. Chlorine's is 3.0. The difference between these numbers, 3.0 minus 0 0.9, just take the absolute value, it doesn't matter whether you put the bigger number first or not, is 2.1. All right, that gives you an ionic bond. If you look at oxygen, O2. Each oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.5. So 3.5 minus 3.5 equals zero. And as expected, the bond is nonpolar covalent. Um, I've got a tripod in the way of my hand, which is why I can't write. Nonpolar covalent. If you look at water, Okay, water is going to be H and then an O and then another H. So you look up the electronegativity of hydrogen. It's 2.1. Oxygen, we just saw, is 3.5. 3.5 3 
The other hydrogen is 2.1. You are, you are concerned about the electronegativity of this bond or of this bond. You're not going to add them up. So it's 3.5 minus 2.1 gives you 1.4. These bonds are polar covalent. If you have ammonia, NH3, the same thing happens. You're looking at N, H, H, and another H. All of the bonds will be identical. <clears throat> So you look up the electronegativity of nitrogen, it's 3.0. Hydrogen is 2.1, again from page 227. I subtract those, 3.0 minus 2.1 gives you 0 0.9, and the bond is polar, or polar covalent. All right, I have a worksheet for you in Google Classroom, and you're gonna do that now and practice determining what kinds of bonds you have.